gold glove last year and playing great defense this year. He is doing amazing. 11 home runs, 10th in, in his position, 40 ribbies, 8th in his position, 17 doubles, 11th in his position, 271 batting average, 15 in his position, 352 on base percentage, 7th in his position. Now, you see those short stops, those great short stops, they're not possibly going to be as great in the bat as they are in defense. Marcus Simeon is good in both at this moment. He's a lot more comfortable. He's comfortable in being a shortstop. He's fast enough. He's doing all these things. That is a big difference maker. He is the second um, leading war player for the Oakland A's. He's doing everything, as is Matt Chapman. So um, if we can get both of those two in the All-Stars, that will be amazing, which was highly not likely because um, they already got out the All-Star ballots. And um, there are some names like, you know, first timers and, and um, guys that are obviously just having a, a fluke type of breakout season. <sighs> it happens, you know, and um, one of the guys that I saw and I, it's, it's helping him because Minnesota is doing great right now. But Jorge Polanco, Jorge Polanco, who is a great defender at shortstop hits pretty good this season um, and immediately takes out Marcus Simeon out of the question. Marcus Simeon wasn't given the proper amount of recognition, you know, and I think Marcus Simeon little by little, if he stays with Oakland will be one of the more important guys in Oakland as well. Everything takes time. Everything takes time. But um, if, if it were me, one of those two guys have to be in the all-stars. One of those two. If both of them are not in, it's 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 rigged. <laughs> it's rigged, man. Um, but we already know it's fan voting, but um, the reserves are typically chosen um, by people that work in the MLB some, some way. Um, the third person, I wouldn't mind being in the All-Stars, Liam Hendricks. Give the guy, the All-Star, um, a nod. 1.42 ERA, 2.33 FIP, 54 strikeouts and 44 innings pitched, 17 walks, which is not too bad for him, one homer given up. And the thing that really impresses me from Liam Hendricks this season that I didn't see for the last two seasons because I wasn't a big Liam Hendricks fan until he's, he was turned into the opener. You know, he was not that comfortable with Oakland coming in um, from the, the trade for Jesse Chavez. Um but now this season, I can say he is another type of pitcher. He can touch ninety eight. Um, he can he can hit he can hit he can crank it up, you know, and has a great slider. Um, occasionally throws the the change sometimes, but he doesn't really need that anyways. But the thing that I like about him, he's kind of like just middle of a tee. He can pitch wherever you need him to do, you know, um, relief wise at least. Closer, setup, or opener. He can do all that. He's had experience doing all of that. So um, right now he's being um, currently tested as a closer. Has succeeded in his first um, save appearance for Oakland. So it's been pretty exciting um, for um, Leon Hendricks. Now, um, changing the topic, players for the future. Now, this this little topic that we're going over are players that, are gonna, that I expect to stay long-term with Oakland players that I expect to leave after this season or soon. Um, so let's go with the yeses first, and I'm going to describe every single reason why. Chris Davis. Now, Chris Davis is the obvious, obviously good yes. Fan favorite. The fans would not forgive Oakland for getting rid of Chris Davis, even if he's not hitting home runs at the moment, and even if he's getting um, really, really unexpectedly big amounts of um, injury list um, calls. KD has got extended. That was the first big step. Letting go that contract would kill the trust of MLB players because he is an important guy in the clubhouse and would extremely ruin the trust that A's fans have in the Oakland A's. Now, the A's are trying to get um, a new ballpark, and they're trying to have fans come in. And we've already heard Dave Cavill. They, they want um, players that the fans know to play for Oakland. So by the time the, the, the Coliseum opens up or the, the new ballpark opens up, 
they already know these players and they it's something that they can they can experience together you know chapman is one of those guys that are going to be kept later too he's here to stay for a while olsen montas i think he's here to stay I mean, I don't think the PDs are going to affect him a lot, like I said last week, but I don't want to touch too much on that because I already said that about the last week. But um, Trevino, I think he's going to be a player for the future, and I think he'll turn things around, if not this season, next season. Simeon, I think he's our shortstop. A lot of people want to disagree with me. A lot of people, <clears throat> a lot of people want to um, say that he is going to be replaced by either Jorge Mateo or Franklin Barreto. But Marcus Simeon is the guy for shortstop. You know, he, he has to be. You know, if he can if he can continue doing what he's doing, he can be he's on pace right now to have another twenty um homer season. But this time, which was unlike la- last time, he is going to have great defense hitting 20 home runs for the first time ever um he's on pace also for um 80 to 90 rbis on pace for um 30 plus doubles which is great for him that that's it's it's just impressive you know if he keeps this up this guy can do damage and he can be one of those shortstops that the A's can't really replace, you know, and that's a, it's the same thing was Judd Lowry. If they, I mean, as well as Jorge Mateo has been hitting and as well as um, Franklin Barreto has been heating up, it's really Simeon's position. Have Barreto, have Mateo fight for second base, have both of them fight for second base. Um, but that's going to have to change. But shortstop, keep with what's working. Third base, Chapman's working. D.H., Chris Davis is working. Shortstop, Marcus Simeon is working. And then the next person I was going to go over was Matt Olsen. He's working at first base. Keep those guys that are going to be the core to your team. They're young. They have energy. They know what it's like to play in Oakland. They know what it's like to succeed in Oakland. They went last year to the playoffs, the wild card game. Very, very exciting um, for A's fans. Keep with what's working. Ramon Laureano can be included to that too. Sean Manaya too. Guys that are important to this ball club that has taken a while, taking three years, 2015 to 2000, um, and, and 17, um, three years to really turn around the organization to a whole nother level. And right now they look like they have guys in the system that can be contributors. They can have enough money to extend people. Um, or sign a free agent, you know, that, that or trades for someone. They, they are good enough to do that. Now, guys that I don't think are going to be part of the future. This one's a maybe. The first one's a maybe. Blake Trinan. Um, actually, the first two are maybes. Blake Trinan, as great a, as he is, I feel like there's going to eventually be a trade that is going to be huge. The A's cannot say no to. Now, Blake Trinan is one year removed from having an historic season. There is going to be a team asking for them, for him. You know, the injuries are kind of worrisome. He hasn't pitched the same after the injury. Um, the, the little um, soreness that he had, whatever. People are going to bite at Blake Trinan. Remember, when we first acquired him, that when he came along with um, Jesus Lazardo and Sheldon Noisy, that was a big. At that moment, Ryan Matson was pitching outstandingly well. Sean Doolittle was pitching like Sean Doolittle. Those were two big guys at the moment that the Washington Nationals acquired. Lazardo at that moment wasn't a big breakout star. I mean, he wasn't expected to be this great. I don't think the Washington Nationals would have gave him up if they would have known that he would have been this great. Sheldon Noisy was decent at the best. Blake Trinan was one of those guys that had one great season, but everyone knew the strikeout ability that he had. Because once we acquired him, there was already teams calling for him and seeing if he was available or we were looking to to to, to let him go. And um, I think he could fit in well 
with Grant Holmes in, in a package. He could fit in well with um, who else? Shell the Noise. You can add him in a package too. Guys that aren't that are being blocked right now. You, you can even add Mark Hanna for all I for I could think. For a big, big star to come change things around with Oakland when they're ready. Now, this season, I'm expecting them to keep trying in, in my opinion. In the offseason, that's when I'm really thinking that they're going to let him go. Um, just because there might be some options in the bullpen later on in the future. Triggs can be an option later on in the bullpen. Um, who else? Combs can be an option in the bullpen. Um, Wong, if he stays, he can be an option. They, they, we can always sign guys, trade for guys. Um, there's there's options out there for the bullpen in the future. Closers, you can keep if the Liam Hendricks thing works out, you can keep to, um, Hendricks and, and and hope for Trevino to bounce back. And there you go, you don't lose that 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 great um, closer um, in in the team. So that's really where I think Trinan is. Um, if you were to tell me two months ago, Trey Trinan, I would think that you're crazy. I would expect that a star, star, um, or a stud of a uh, of a starting pitcher. But um, right now, I think it's easier to move him around. Um, but I don't think I think Oakland's going to over rally him. You know, I think Oakland's going to not be as lazy and um, um, less careful to get rid of him. I don't think they're looking to get rid of him. I think that's the guy um, who they might keep because um, I, I think that's one of those Billy Bean type guys, you know, um, give a raise um, just to keep him in here. Um, it, that's why I have him as maybe because it can go both ways. Um, but Piscotti. Piscotti, I think, is a no. Simply because he kind of slows down what we're doing. The outfield can be great if it wanted to. You know, Mark Hanna is not getting enough at, at bats, but I think Mark Hanna is one of those guys that are going to be moved as well. Um, Pinder is not getting as much as bats. Sky Bolt is knocking on the door, you know. Um, a lot of there's a lot of um, players that would love to take over that spot. Jorge Mateo or, or Franco Barreto can play in the corner positions in the outfield. They would they wouldn't mind being out there, you know. Sheldon Noisy maybe in the outfield, corner outfield, uh, has a great arm. So that that's something that Piscotti I think is a little block. I mean, besides the hole in left field, that's obvious. Um, Piscotti hasn't been as great as last year. You know, and um, hopefully he can heat things up. He shut me up before once. But Piscotti was one of those guys that was brought in Oakland. Everyone was shaking their head. Okay, they gave up Max Schrock and, and Yaro Munoz for a guy that cost a lot. And the first two months, everyone was frustrated with him and that he shut everybody down. And he can still do that. You know, he's probably a guy that just heats up in the second half. I don't know. But Piscotti, um, I don't think he is the guy for the future. I think they're going to go young. Grossman as well. Um, that's just for obvious reason. Profar, he's blocking everybody. I think this this has been one of the worst um, acquisitions ever. Um, next to Billy Butler, um, it's just been horrible. Fegley, I think the A's will sell high on Fegley. If the A's are smart, they will let go of Fegley. Fegley is not that great in defense. Besides the arm, he is not great at pitch framing. He's not that great. You have Bo Taylor, who is a capable backup um, catcher. Sean Murphy knocking on the door. Jonah Heim knocking on the door. Chris Herman knocking on the door. Fegley's going to get blocked by all these guys. Um, Herman, I don't think, would um, be better as Fegley because Fegley is breaking out little by little. Um, Bo Taylor... I think can do just as good of a job as Josh Fegley if given the opportunity. He's one of those guys who's just being blocked by Fegley, you know, and would be blocked by Murphy later on in the future. But um, but Fegley, he's not the catcher of the future, he, and he doesn't want to be backup. Give him to the Orioles or something. Include him in a trade um, for Michael Gibbons or something. Fegley should be moved at this time now that he is at his highest point. Um, and let's go over the catching situation. Herman, Fegley, Murphy, Taylor, Hunley, Rupp, and Jonah Heim. Those are all guys that can play 
in the MLB.